Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna hide myself today. I've been uh, pretty sick. I'm still recovering, but um, I keep getting asked this question to talk more about Exard versus Strive and um, if uh, if Strive is more interesting than Exard, is it better? And I guess, you know what, I'll, I'll give you that. I, I do think, although I think that Strive is more interesting than Exard, I do think there probably is an argument for Xard being the better game, even though I don't care about Xard. So, um, uh, remember, if you like these kind of videos, like, sub, silly, comment, whatever, if you want to support the channel. Um, I'm going to start whispering and doing these stupid voices, right? Um, so, you know, this talks about a lot of the dangers of progression, though. Um, I'm going to talk about fundamental stuff and the dangers of progression. So, you got to remember when Xard came out, Besides the fact that I called Xard, I fucking did, even when the Japanese had it a year before us, I called it. Oh no, nothing you say was going to work, but then guess what, it worked, blah, blah, blah. Xard, to me, was a lot of one step forward, one step back. There, there were some progressive ideas, and there's some things I like a lot, like, um, you know, I think Johnny is awesome. Johnny's one of the coolest characters, um ever in fighting games actually not a character i play you know but he's a progressive take i mean you could have an ex johnny at this point i think a character like chip is interesting he's a progressive take on the character and there are some here and there things that are interesting about it like you know kai he has that little magic rune or seal that he puts up and it changes um what his fireballs do that that's kind of progressive and it's interesting but there's a lot of one step back with the game right it's kind of, you know, it feels slower, it feels sluggish, um, you know, and I've talked about this before in the dangers of progression of video games. There's only so much you can do with a fighting game, right? There's only so much you can do with characters, whatever it might be, before it starts to feel oversaturated, right? So ultimately, one of the things you have to do to, you know, make a game progressive one of the only things you can actually do is system stuff right system stuff you can still more easily easily quotation marks easily quotation marks you can make more system stuff right you know um that's why you have stuff like you know how counter hits work and strive you have the wall and strive you know i'm not saying this stuff is good for now but for sake of argument you have custom combos and they came in alpha too you know dragon ball fighter z had the homie dash first reflecting and fireball kind of stuff right System mechanics are something more that you easily you can put into a game, but even that can get oversaturated. And characters, you know, a lot of times when you see characters progress throughout things, if you think about something like King of Fighters, you know, their characters started having so many moves, they started having, they had to constantly reinvent their characters. And for what it's worth, um, like I said, King of Fighters did that incredibly well for a while. For a while, King of Fighters, I think, was second to none in terms of reinventing characters and somehow continuing to make them interesting, right? But the problem with XArt as well is that Guilty Gear kind of, you know, a victim of its own success. It became the anime game. Uh, and what is an anime game, it eventually kind of became an idea that... Um, and not that Plus R started to have problems as well, but by the time you got to XR, it just felt like, what did every character do? It just felt like every character was, I knock you down into my bullshit and you got to block it. I'm not trying to defend the wall. I'm not trying to defend the wall and strive right now, but I'm just calling a spade a spade, right? You know, it, as many interesting things as XR is, a lot of times it just it felt kind of stale. It just felt like, what does this new character do? Oh, this character knocks you down into their bullshit. You got to block it. Oh, what does this character do? Oh, well, he knocks you down into a big fireball and you got to block it. And it's just like, eh, that's just what, that's what an anime game is now. It doesn't matter how cool Johnny it is. It doesn't matter how progressive Chip is. You know, Kai is one step forward, one step back. You know what I mean? The seal magic thing is cool. But, you know, then they started taking stuff away from him. It's just kind of like, eh, this is... This is all Guilty Gear is, and it's kind of a dumbed-down version in a sense of, you know, Plus R, whatever it might be. It, it just kind of felt like it was old, right? I, I just, the, the, the new characters aren't that interesting to me, right? 
But I think if you think about Exard fundamentally, although I'm saying it's a victim of its own success, that doesn't necessarily mean I think it's a terrible game if you're talking about it objectively speaking, right? I mean, fundamentally, I think you can look at it and you can see, um, you know, YRC. Uh, like I said, I think the funny thing is I think, I think people actually don't like YRC, but I think YRC is pretty interesting. But it's the idea that they took YRC away from FRC, whatever, blah, blah. Yeah, you know, they took away more of the time and shit, which I think is stupid, right? But in terms of just like the fundamental game, subjectively, I don't care about the game because it's boring and it's stale and it's one step forward, one step back, one step forward, two steps back at a time. But objectively speaking, if you look at it fundamentally wise, there's certain things you can say is wrong like i think um and again i know people hate that i talk about dragon punches i jesus fucking christ but when you have a mechanic in the game like yrc and then you make specific rules that oh you can't dp a yrc to make yourself safe and i think there's a couple of other moves that they just have a specific rule in that you cannot yrc this when you are making a specific rule for how your game can be played that only apply to certain characters or certain moves, that's bullshit. That's not being objective, that's bullshit. I I'm sorry that you hate DPs, but that's fucking retarded. So I think that is a fundamental flaw. And I think you can look at Danger Time, and Danger Time obviously is very, very sketchy at best. But again, objectively speaking, would I say that XRD in all its faults, is potentially a better game than Strive. I think that, objectively speaking, you, you could probably make that argument. Is it as interesting? No, I don't think it's as interesting because Strive, I mean, like I said, look at the way counter hits work. If you think about how methodical, again, I keep saying that word, the game is more methodical, right? And even standing blocking and ducking blocking, not just the normal stuff and um, normally how fighting games work, you know, you think, or Guilty Gears and past, like FD, the difference between FD, the difference between jumping in FD, and, you know, instant blocking, all these different kind of things, you know, changing what is punishable and not. Excuse me. Now you even have standing blocking and ducking blocking regular. The pushbacks seem to be different. And then when you tie that in with making it so intricate and in what is punishable and the way that counter hits work in the game, you know, with how counter hits and strive are not just the stun of the move, it's actually like a time-based beater. So it's like how long you had to combo the guy to take advantage of this counter hit, right? When you add that into the intricacies of what is punishable and spacing in the game, I think that is a very interesting take on fighting games, right? Unfortunately, it goes back to we're talking about combos. Well, the game's combos are fucked up because of the wall. The wall is a huge fundamental flaw it is encouraging the player to play safe and um i know it's an obscure example but i use i should have made i can't believe i didn't think of that originally when i was making videos for the game you know that example i, I said me and a friend played and i had hit him with the dp so high in the air that it splatted the wall and i did not have time to recover to even punish him very obscure example but look at example like that I can't tell. And something like that you could even fix so simply just by, even though I think the wall is terrible, but fundamentally speaking, you could just say, have the cracks on the wall. Don't just show the crack on the wall when the character's being hit. Show the crack on the wall the entire time you're near the corner. So at least there is a visual cue that it's about to break. And then show it slowly dissipating. That's a visual fucking cue that at least is more reasonable to the person playing the game. It's not going to fix those one problems of, you know, if I hit a move so high that then I can't recover. Like, that's just retarded. But at least that would fix some of the fundamental problem. But um, And, of course, there's other fundamental things, I think, about Strive that is kind of haphazard. Like, you know, the game in one ear is encouraging you to be more fundamentally and neutral-based, you know, deliberate, methodical. But... Then in the other ear, since it's more, you know, aggressive with negative penalties, it's kind of, you know, I don't know why you would be more aggressive with negative penalties in a game that you uh, want to be more methodical like that. It's, it's pretty strange. I'm not saying negative penalties don't have it. 
don't need to be in it because it's it's interesting to have someone kind of like urging you along and kicking you in the butt, you know, to do something. But again, considering the game, being more aggressive is strange. But, you know, Strive is more interesting. I think it has, again, it has more ideas. The characters feel potentially more progressive. Unfortunately, the characters are kind of stale. They were left out to dry. They weren't trusted enough to do stuff. But I think Strive, in all its faults, there's more of an interesting idea. When you think about a game like XR going one step forward, one step back, one step forward, two steps back in many places, Strive is going off in a totally different direction, right? And so, I'm sorry, this chair keeps making noise. This is ruining the ASMR, right? But Strive is going off in a, in a different direction, right? It's not necessarily one step forward, one step back. It's progressing in a new way, right? And again, there's a danger of progression, right? Because if you keep doing the same thing, the game can become oversaturated, right? Of course, that's why I said a game like Plus R, for sure already was becoming an oversaturated game even though i like plus r more than x hard plus r is definitely a game that you're like wow this game like some of the moves just feel like mugen moves they're just throwing it in and they're kind of like eh. and they're not even interesting mugen moves like i'm not saying you can't fix plus r i think you i think plus plus r you definitely could still do stuff for but i think you can also look at it objectively and being like wow a lot of characters have a lot of shit they're doing in this game there's not a lot of place to go here. And the thing with Plus R is Plus R has a lot of moves that I don't think are well thought out. You know what I mean? So, But again, I, I guess Strive, more interesting, but the fundamental problems of Strive are just so bad that, yes, I think you could make the argument, of the obje objectively speaking, yeah, XR as it is probably is a better game as it is, right? But is it more interesting to someone that has been already been playing video games for years? And, and like I said, one of the differences is between a lot of people that play video games is, you know, I play video games casually, just randomly, right? And if I don't want to play a game, it doesn't matter if it's new. I'm not going to play it, right? Maybe people feel like, oh, I'm forced to play XR because this was the big game. Now people are forced to shill strive because it's the next game. If I don't want to play a game, I'm not going to play it. Right? I mean, I'm not going to play strive or XR. But could I see myself playing strive over XR more reasonably? Yes. I think if they polish things up in strive, I would play just because it feels different and it feels more new to a person that has already been playing games for so many years, right? So again, hopefully that makes sense. Too long, didn't read. XR, yeah, I think you can make the argument that it is better because fundamentally, there are some fundamentally things that objectively saying, yes, I think are bad game design. But are they fundamentally objectively bad as Strive? No, Strive has way more objectively bad things in it, I think. But interesting-wise and progressive-wise, yes, Strive is much better. The end.